Hi guys, Christian here, coming to you with a quick video on how Peter Schiff used the weak economy driving the strong housing market. Wait a second. How does that work? A weak economy driving a strong housing market? Actually, there's going to be a huge reversal soon. You'll see how the market's going to crash, similar to the 2008 financial crisis. The largest cities in America are increasing their tax base dramatically, and that's having a huge effect on what housing prices are going to be in the near future. Make sure that you stay until the end when we find out exactly when the timing's going to occur. Consumer confidence for August unexpectedly dropped. They were looking for an improvement over the prior month, which was 92.6. They thought that it would move up to 93. Well, first of all, they downwardly revised the July number from 92.6 to 91.7. So consumers a little bit less confident than was originally thought. But the expectation that they would get more confident in August was completely wrong because confidence tanked down to 84.8. I think that's a new six-year low. So if you think there's a V-shaped recovery, clearly the consumers aren't sensing that because they are less optimistic now than at any point in the last six years. But if you look at the new home sales number, that blew away estimates. In fact, they upwardly revised the June number, which was initially reported as 776,000. They moved that up to 791. And the consensus for July was 774. Instead, we got 901,000. This is the best number for new home sales since 2006. Now, what was happening in 2006? The housing bubble. In fact, 2006 was actually the peak. That's when housing prices actually peaked was 2006, maybe even 2005. 2005, 2006 was when the market peaked and you had a lot of sales. And 2007 is when the market imploded. And then 2008 is when that implosion uh, resulted in the financial crisis. But you have to go all the way back to the bubble days of that big housing bubble to find a, you know, a month where we had this many uh, new home sales. Now, is this because the economy is booming? No, again, it's got nothing to do with a booming economy. In fact, one of the reasons that so many new homes are being bought is because the economy is so weak that mortgage rates are down at 2.5%. I mean, you can get a 30-year fixed rate conforming loan at 2.5% fixed for 30 years. They are giving people money to buy homes. Because remember, you can still deduct your mortgage interest on a house. I mean, up to a certain amount, but certainly for a conforming uh, mortgage that the government is going to guarantee, uh, you're going to be able to deduct that. And so the net after-tax cost of the money is below 2%. That is below even the Fed's official inflation rate. Now, the actual inflation rate is well north of that. But here, you could borrow money to buy a house for less than the annual inflation rate that we have now. Obviously, the inflation rate is going to go up a lot over the next 30 years. But you could lock in a mortgage of 2.5%, which after tax is less than the current inflation rate locked in for 30 years. So this is a great trade. I mean, anybody who is going out and taking out a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 2.5% is going to make a fortune on the mortgage, right? Because they're going to borrow this money today and they're going to use it to buy a real asset like a house. And by the time they finish paying off the lender, the lender is going to get a bunch of worthless paper. You know, so no one is going to make money as a homeowner because in real terms, the homes that you're buying with these 30-year fixed rate mortgages are going to depreciate, but the money that the lender is loaning you is going to depreciate more. So what you lose as a homeowner, you will more than make up for as a debtor. The real losers are the lenders, right? Whoever owns that mortgage, and in which cases it's the bank. Because even though the government is guaranteeing that you'll pay the mortgage, if there's hyperinflation, I mean, that guarantee doesn't mean anything because of course you'll pay the mortgage. It's no big deal. It's nothing. The problem is that the mortgage doesn't have any value to the lender, to the bank. See, the government doesn't insure that. All the government does is insure 
that the mortgage will be repaid in dollars. It doesn't ensure anything about those what those dollars are going to be worth. So what does this mean, right? If you're gonna if we're gonna load up all of American banks with 30-year mortgages at two and a half percent, what happens when interest rates eventually go up, which they have to, and all these banks are stuck with these mortgages that barely cover a fraction of the annual inflation rate? I mean, we are setting up our financial system for a complete implosion. The banks are going to fail. Anybody that owns these mortgages, pension plans, endowments, this is going to be a complete disaster. Yes, it's a windfall for the debtor, but it's a disaster for the creditor. And a lot of Americans are creditors that don't even know it, but our whole financial system is going to implode like a house of cards because of these low mortgages. But certainly, it's these cheap mortgages that are being subsidized not only by the government because the government guarantees that you'll pay, but by the Federal Reserve because they guarantee that you pay an insanely low interest. People are now taking advantage of that to buy new homes, even though the cost of building new homes is really going up and the price is at a record high now to buy a new home. And if you look at lumber prices, at the cost of building these homes is really going to go up. Plus, a lot of the other supplies are probably in shortage right now due to COVID. So it's costing more and more money to build these homes. But right now, when you can borrow at 2.5% because the economy is so bad, and it's only because the economy is lousy that you can get a mortgage this cheap, which is the only reason that people are able to buy. But what is actually causing them to buy is probably not necessarily the cheap mortgages. That's what enabling them to buy, right? What is causing them to go out and buy is because they want to get the hell out of the city. That's why, because the economy there is so bad, because the crime is so high, because now they can work from home and so they no longer have to live in the city. And why would they want to with all the crime and all the increasing taxes? And they need more space. They're working from home and they're living in a two bedroom, three bedroom apartment and they got kids who aren't even going to school, who are stuck at home as well. So they got to get out of these cities. They they need more space. Uh, They need a lower cost of living. And so people are now rushing out into the suburbs and they're bidding up prices. And that's going to continue. And these high tax states, look, I just read an article today, New Jersey is hiking taxes. Now it's just on the millionaires. Uh, But it's going to be on everybody else. They're raising the taxes on people with incomes of over a million dollars a year. Uh, And the top rate right now in New Jersey is 8.97%. And so they're going to move it up to 10.75%, almost 11%. But, you know, the problem when these high tax states raise taxes because they have budget problems that result from too much government spending, every time they raise taxes to try to you know, plug up that gap, it does nothing to address the underlying problem of out of control spending. And so when they just raise taxes, each tax hike guarantees that there's another tax hike coming. And so it's like a slow death, right? It's like Chinese water torture. So people are going to wake up those who already haven't, and they got to get the hell out of there. I mean, even if you can afford the 10.75%, it's only going higher. So what is your breaking point? Is it 12%, 15%, 20%? But the reality is, if you're going to leave eventually, because they're going to eventually hit your breaking point, why not leave now? Because the whole thing is inevitable. And in fact, as high taxes chase more people out, the budget problem gets even worse. Because now the high tax payers are gone. And so now they're paying nothing. So instead of getting 8.9% of something, they get 10.75% of nothing. And so because so many people leave because the tax hikes, then the ones that are dumb enough to pay have to pick up the slack with an even bigger tax hike in the future. So in order to avoid all that, you might as well get the hell out now. But this is happening in all these cities and all these high tax states. People now realize, hey, wait a minute, my employers are not only saying I can work from home, they are encouraging me to work from home. I mean, that reduces their liability too, because you're not coming into an office where you can get COVID or you can infect somebody else with COVID. And so now people are looking all over the country and they're buying houses and they're taking advantage of the two and a half percent fixed rate mortgage to buy a property, even if it means they end up defaulting on the mortgage on their 
condos in the cities, you know, once you secure your new digs, what difference does it make if you screw up your credit uh, with a foreclosure on your existing place? And of course, a lot of the people that are living in the cities, they're renting. So it's no big deal. I mean, it's just they pay off their rent and now their landlord is stuck with an empty building and, and, and no tenant. So don't think that this spike in home sales means we got a booming economy. It doesn't. We have a lousy economy. In fact, it's so bad that people are trying to get the hell out of the city to lower their cost of living. And they're doing that by buying homes in the suburbs. And this is what is driving uh, the new home sales. It's the desperation on the part of people in the city trying to get the hell out of Dodge. And the fact that the economy is so lousy, the Fed is able to keep interest rates so low and basically provide a massive subsidy in addition to the government guaranteed loan, which is a subsidy in and of itself because it reduces the default risk to the lender. So it makes it easier for people to borrow money. And now the Fed has made it even cheaper to borrow that money. So that is what is behind this diversion. So yes, consumer confidence is dropping even as they're you know buying more houses. So what did you think? Leave a comment down below on what you thought about Peter Schiff's analysis of the housing market. I think he hit it dead on. We're in for a pretty wild ride for the rest of the year and into 2021. Go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you'll find out as soon as other real estate videos like this one are posted.